Salvete omnes, this is I'm Amelia, also known as the Martian Geek. And we finished the first half of World 2, so let's move on to the second half with Parched Plateau 4. You know, in previous versions of the game, this was Parched Plateau 5, and the next level here was Parched Plateau 4. But, for whatever reason, they ended up being switched in the final product, so now we have this one is 3-4, and the other one, or 2-4, and the other one is 2-5. And we have Boomerang Brothers to deal with. The deadly silent Boomerang Brothers, too. And Quicksand and Volcano Lotuses. Actually, honestly, just about every power-up in Mario game is kind of overpowered, given that how easily most of the enemies fall to them. Like, Fire Flowers, you can just about shoot everything in your way. Well, except Volcano Lotuses, but... Well, and some others, like Sumo Brothers. More Quicksand... I guess I probably should have passed that one up, too. bad timing. Somebody actually did make a custom sound effect for those Boomerang Brothers. So... Might look to, to be a little more polished if that were added, but it's not a requirement. Yeah, Boomerang Brothers go well with deserts. I don't really know why, but... You always picture them being associated with one another, because... They showed up in the desert in Super Mario Bros. 3, I suppose. But in any case, well, that's the end of 2-4, I guess. And now to move on to 2-5, or Parched Plateau 5. And you'll notice that pyramid icon there. Yeah, we're in the pyramid. And once again, the background doesn't scroll. What? It, why is that? I can't think I remember the author saying something about having a reason for it, but I don't remember it. Ah, dang it. Super Mario Land enemy. I don't know what those things are called. Some sort of sphinx-like creature? It sure sphinx if they catch you. Also, I remember this one being... Well... Rather labyrinthine and confusing, and... Yeah, I may take multiple tries to get through this one. I was not supposed to use that P-switch there. Also, darn you, Sphinx, you respawned. So did the Koopa. Fortunately, I don't think it's ever possible to get into a situation where you absolutely can't go anywhere in this level. I'm guessing I was supposed to use the P-switch to get through there by turning those blocks into coins. The problem with this one is you have to go all over the place if you want to not only get through it, but find everything. Oh hey, it's Fire Snake from Super Mario Bros. 3 and I think some of the new Super Mario Bros. games. There's another place where you could put a P-Switch. And rather than use it right away, I'm going to see if there's anything over here that I need it. Well... No? Okay. Just keep going in a straight line until I end up somewhere I've already been before, and I did. Back to the beginning. I don't recall this one having a midway point, either. Okay, so that was careless. Well, I'm still not going to use that P-switch where it's supposed to be used, because there is a door in the other place that I didn't go through. Music from Super Mario Land. Because instead of castles, that game had pyramids, essentially, at the end of each world. Hmm. Of course, you can't tell where the door is now, because the coins don't respawn. But, it's right there. It's a room with no way out! Well, we can step on the switch here. GV. Or Gamma V. 
Now you'll notice we still have no way out. Well, patience is a virtue. Yeah, you teleport right about when the P-switch is ready to run out. Is there any other reason to step on that P-switch? I don't think so, not in this room, but... Yeah. See the... Yeah, I know, I've played this game before, but... This level is, like, confusing enough that I don't even remember where everything is. Despite... Whoops, dang it. It's not actually being my first time through, so... Forgive me if I take a little while. Yeah, with an empty item box, I'll get whatever power-up I can find, even if it does mean making all the enemies basically cannon fodder. Now, I don't think there's anything else in that other room I needed to get, so... P-switch time. That can't reach me when I'm directly below you now, can you? Okay, now we're in a new room again. More fire snakes, more yellow Koopas. Oh yeah, the yellow Koopas actually turn around to follow you after a while. So yeah, they're slightly more threatening and dangerous than green Koopas, but not by a lot. Will there be a P-switch door there? Oh hey, speaking of P-switches... forgot that was there. But we shan't use it just yet. Boy, a ground pound move would be useful there. Is there anything else I can do with that P-switch? Oh, hey. Free life. I was thinking Starlight Ad Island Adventure didn't hide anything like that. You know the new Super Mario Brothers games do it quite a lot. Okay, I'm down to 215 units of time. Can I kill these... Uh, no, I can't. Yeah, those guys weren't invincible like that in Super Mario Bros. 3. Or any of the new Super Mario Bros. games that they showed up in. So, um, once again, I made a Tessera version of that sprite, and if I recall... Well, it should be not invincible. I mean, you can kill it with a shell or whatever. Okay, where's the door? That P-switch wasn't there for no reason. There it is. Now that I think about it, do the P-switches in Super Mario Bros. 3 last for a shorter time than in Super Mario World? Because it seems like more of the music played. Okay, to the left we find... Last Yoshi coin. And I think a P switch door actually appears in that spot. To the right, we find more Sphinxes and another P switch. And another door. Oh, wait a minute. I bet there was something up there that I could have used the P switch to get. Okay, how far back am I? I told you this stage was kind of confusing. Well, I get the feeling it's one of those ones that, um... Wouldn't be too much of a problem if you just memorized where everything is. Oh hey, these coins respawn. No direct map six or placed them through direct map 16, I'm guessing. But I don't have the time to stand here and wait because my timer is running out. Whoops, that wasn't the right way. Ah, uh, that cost me. Yeah, I'm probably gonna die from the time running out. Which isn't a common occurrence in either my official Mario games or hacks. Dang it! Why do I keep running into the same dang Sphinx enemies? Though actually, New Super Mario Bros. U seemed to be a bit stricter with the time limits than its brethren. I'm not really sure why. 32, 31... Yeah, I'm not gonna make it, but... I got all the Yoshi coins, not that it matters. But they won't respawn. And I know where to go. 
Okay, switch. Also, I notice the music isn't going fast. Oh, poop. wonder what happens if you... Hmm. Yep, zero. There we go. Time up. Let's try that again. Now that I know exactly where to go, and don't have to worry about getting the Yoshi coins anymore. There's a reason you get 600 units of time for this one. I crushed the Sphinx. I guess I could go to that one room with all the coins. Why not, considering I lost a life from the timer. Fire snake. Well, I already missed the room with the coins, actually, but something else. Oh wait, there's a one up over here. Okay, well I can just keep getting that, I guess. Not that I intend to die anymore in this level, although that's now starting to become more likely to happen. A Koopa, really? Get hit by a Koopa? Door? I'm too far back, aren't I? There we are. Yeah, like, if this were Super Mario Bros. 3, it seemed like that timer would have run out. And once again, I forgot to check and see if those coins did anything. Something hidden there. I don't suppose I can jump high enough to get it without the P-Switch. I don't think so. And I'm guessing those coins don't respawn. Whoa. I'm small. I don't like the prospects of that. Nothing here either. And this should be the exit. Yes, it is. See, that level's not exactly hard, it's just the first time through it can be pretty confusing, and on subsequent times, well, it's just a matter of remembering where everything is. The rooms look similar, but not identical, so get an automatic save point after that one too. Also, it, I think that actually that one actually would have fit better as 2-4 rather than 2-5, because it's like a completely different theme, theme from the previous four levels, so it makes sense to break up the similarly themed ones with one that's different. But anyway, we're in... I didn't think... I forgot whose castle it was. Ludwig's? Well, we're in somebody's castle at least. I'll probably die anyway. If not, well, I'll find out when I get to the boss. A bit different palette here than the first castle, and we have falling platforms that are made out of apparently very light rock. And unstable at that. Chains and... More long jumps. I'm gonna take that cake because I have an empty item box. Uh oh, auto scroll. Oh dearie me. I kind of forgot what most of these castles were like actually. Well, fortunately, I have a cape, so. Also, um, use some incorrect graphics there. Okay, which way am I supposed to go here to get the, the 
other way. What would be interesting is to do, like, um, the second castle of New Super Mario Bros. Wii and have an auto-scrolling area that acted like the maze castles in Super Mario Bros. Oh, hey, boss door already. Okay, so we are fighting Ludwig, and he's shooting notes at us. Hmm. I think you're a little flat there, Ludwig. Especially after having a big fat plumber jump on you. Oh, hey, he takes more than three hits. Well, whoops. That is called being an idiot. Ludwig down. And we move on to World 3, and apparently a sparkle on the sand. Crystal Caverns, I see. Two worlds down and six to go. With that, that's the end of this one, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.